<laughs> I feel like you've harassed me enough, no. but <laughs> I've just been working on my wall hangings. I've had um, actually quite a few orders lately, so I've been trying to knock those out. And it's like between the full time gig and trying to come home and do that, it's it takes a little time. And then I got a new puppy. So oh, yeah, what kind is yeah. it? A uh, golden doodle, and his name is Cash. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a big old baby, and all he wants is hugs and belly rubs. Mm-hmm. But the but the house training is kind of like wearing me out. Yeah, like, that's always a doozy. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> I mean, but it'll get easier in like six months. It's a long time. It's a long time. So, yeah. So, it's like I have to, like, I don't want to keep him in the crate all the time. So, when I have him out of the crate, I have to keep my eyes on him, like, all the time. time. So, because he's going to, you know, have little accidents and stuff. He's already ruined some stuff. But, so, that's kind of hard, like, when I'm home and I don't want him in a crate. But then I want to work, too, in in my office. So he absolutely cannot come in my office because I don't want him to screw anything up. And then I don't want to have like dog hair and stuff like that on my products. I just don't like that. I know some people, um, <laughs> they have their dogs everywhere. And I yeah. just, I have a problem with that. Like what if somebody is allergic or whatever to dog hair or something like that? I just don't want, I, my preference is to not have my dog around my products. So he is banned from my office. Yeah, I think that's even a good lesson for our listeners out there, too. Like, if you have products, because a lot of times, you know, even with the fashion truck or pop-up shops or whatever, you have products all over your house. If you have pets, make sure your pets don't go near your products. That is kind of (laughs) gross. And, and, I mean, not even that, just to protect them so that they don't get chewed up or, you know, mistaken for a toy. (laughs) That, too. (laughs) So. Yeah, but you also too, unless you want to talk about it later, um, made a decision. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I made a decision to open up a brick and mortar retail store for my wall hangings and home decor furnishings. Woohoo! So the decision is as far as I've gotten though, <laughs> because it's gonna take a lot a lot of money and a lot of planning. So the area that I want to be in, in Chicago on the North side, the rent is like ranging between 1500 and two grand a month. And that's ridiculous. So I have to do some serious saving. And I, um, I started a crowdfunding uh, campaign on GoFundMe. So if you guys want to help me contribute, please do so. Your girl really, really needs it. Um, the link will be in the show notes. It is Estrell Riles on GoFundMe. So you can, you know, just search for that name if you want or just go to the show notes for the link. Um, is I just can't believe, like, the rent prices though but the the thing is like I want to be I want to have a storefront with nice big window and a place that has great foot traffic because I'm gonna need that that walk-in you know that walk-in traffic and I think maybe um on the future episode too we can because I know people are probably like what you're starting a brick and mortar store and you're you're talking on a fashion truck podcast you sell out (laughs) <laughs> well, but. no, because I figure the, the reason being is that I want to do furniture, too. I refurbish furniture pieces and a truck is not going to be able to hold the amount of inventory that I want to have on hand. But that's what I was thinking, like maybe a future episode we can talk about the differences between like. And, and reasons why you may or may not want to do like a brick and mortar versus a pop-up shop versus, you know, a fashion truck or Airstream, you know, a, you know, mobile via, you know, something mobile. But we can talk about maybe like 
based on what we've heard and seen in our research, like the pros and cons of all of them. So when people are making their decision, they make the best decision based on their product, their budget, yada, yada, yada. Right. You know? Yeah. So, and, and I, I ideally would want to have at least uh, on the low end, like three months of rent and utilities before I open, but on the high end, six months that way, just to cover me in case maybe one month I just don't get any business or have enough business, you know, so that is what the GoFundMe is for. Um, so once again, help us out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody that we have interviewed so far has inspired me. You know, I I want to to follow my dreams too and just have that be my full time. And then eventually I would want to expand into the into the mobile boutique as well. So that I could take my my pieces to to the events and do the, you know, the pop-up shops and things like that. Mm-hmm. No, I think it's really cool. Well, while Australia was like looking forward to looking uh, towards the future, I was in Hawaii. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo! <It> was fabulous. <laughs> Went to the big island. Now I want to do like Maui or Honolulu too, just to check it out. But no, folks, if you've never been to Hawaii before, and at least if you go to the Big Island, that's all I can speak for because um, that's the only place I've been in Hawaii. Uh, there is a lot of lava. Like you think you're going there and you're just going to see like beautiful trees and everything will look kind of like a rainforest. No. Half the island is covered in lava foundations. It's like nothing but lava. But I don't say that as a bad thing. It was beautiful. It was just unexpected because all the the pictures you see of Hawaii are green. So and did you so greenery? Yeah. So basically we were on the Kona side and the Hilo side is it rains all the time, almost every day on that side. So that side really did look like kind of like a rainforest. But you probably, if you stay in a hotel, you probably want to stay on the Kona side because there's just like more things over there. But um, if you do decide to go to the big island, definitely go to the Volcano National Park, see all the different beautiful falls, the beautiful beaches, you know, we went snorkeling, ATVing, we went stargazing. Um, it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, and now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but it was it was gorgeous. Uh, we saw some actually some lava, like some you know, of course, from a distance, but you could see it boiling because we were there at night and you could just see the lava. I mean, it's just fascinating to me that people live on this island with an active volcano. It's like bananas. But um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely gorgeous. I, I recommend the trip. It was a 10-hour flight, which is crazy, but uh, so worth it. Yeah. You know, and then both of us uh, over the break did our pop up shops. I actually did two. I did one with West Elm and one with Knot and Grain, and uh, both went very well. And I'm probably going to be teaching a class on how to macrame light cord. So if anybody's in the DC area and they're interested in that, just send us a message. And I'll send you more information. And and anytime you guys want to talk to us, you can go to our contact page on startafashiontruck.com or just email us at hello at findafashiontruck.com and you can get both of us. Oh, and by the way, your girl is going to be a maker at the Renegade Craft Fair in Chicago. yes. In September, September 10th and 11th, I was super, super excited when they accepted me into the events. I did my little happy dance, like, woo-hoo, woo-hoo, woo-hoo. 
But now you got to get all your stuff. I got to make a whole bunch of crap. (laughs) (laughs) I got to get everything together for that. So um, I'm going to be a busy, a busy little bee. But, but, but it's really bee. good. They get, they have like I don't even know how many people, but tons of people go to that. Yeah, there are gonna be thousands of people. Yeah. Um, so that's why I want to have my game on a hundred percent. Yeah. So if you're in Chicago, definitely check her out. Yeah. So I don't think I told you this, but you know I had applied for Crafty Bastards in DC. Oh yeah, you did tell me. I was waitlisted. No, but that's good because last year I was just straight denied. Oh, so you're moving up. <laughs> I'm moving up. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like you where I'm going to be at the event, but maybe next year. <laughs> I am on the wait list. <laughs> like maybe somebody will get sick and they won't be able to make it. That's me. But you know what? Like <laughs> real talk though. So the, I applied for half of a booth, which was $300. So secretly it was like one part of me was like, I hope I get in. I hope I get in. But secretly I was like, well, maybe they'll just like, you know, deny me so I can get my money back. I got stuff to do. <laughs> But you're going to make that money back like tenfold. <laughs> so, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, my God. La, yeah, the no. life of a poor person. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, total change of subject real quick. Because you mentioned it before we started. Um, we were interviewed on the Spirit of 608 podcast. Um, And you guys may remember, we actually had her on before and she was talking about um, just how she interviews people like sustainable brands. I want to say she might have been one of the first people. She was the first person of season two. Yeah. And so and then season two, just just not on purpose, ended up just having a whole bunch of people who, um, you know, were kind of like sustainable businesses. But anywho, she interviewed us, and so that just aired this week, and so it's pretty cool. So if you uh, download, or if yeah, or if you subscribe to her podcast, Spirit of Six Hundred Eight, you'll hear us. And we'll have the link to that episode in our show notes as well. Um, But yeah, let's get on to today's guest. Uh, We've talked. This has been a long intro. I mean, it's because this is season three. Um, yeah, so bear with us. You, 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 you guys will be okay. <laughs> and you know we talk a lot. Like you know, Estrell talks a lot. I really don't, <laughs> but I just happen to have a lot of things to say today. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Yeah. It's so a lot going on. You know, I guess we can get in. You know, to talking about Kelly and Nicole. They yeah. are. The owners of the Nickel and Birch Mobile Boutique in Southern California. (laughs) Yeah, what's amazing about their story is they started off with an Etsy shop that ended up becoming crazy popular. And they then used the funds for that shop to fund, fully fund their mobile boutique. How awesome is that? Yep. And then they decided to actually keep the Etsy shop in conjunction with the mobile boutique so that the Etsy shop can continue to funnel in more moolah for them. Yeah. I mean, I, I love hearing stories like this um, because, you know, they just like went for it and. And they actually, um, both of them recently quit their full-time jobs so that they can focus on the mobile boutique. Yeah, you know what? I find that's interesting because uh, even when they tell their story about like getting their truck and everything, and they're just like, yep, here's a truck. Um, a lot of times, like people who just kind of go for it and wing it, they are the ones that get off the ground and, you know, become crazy popular and make it. And then the people who, not all the time, over plan and overthink stuff are the ones that take the longest, which sometimes I'm in that camp and sometimes I'm not. I could be two extremes. It just depends what it is. 
you know, but did they take the longest to do, then by the time they decide to do it, they've kind of lost their momentum and they're just not as popular or they just, I don't know, they just like lose motivation. I don't know what it is. Um, so I, I love hearing stories like this of people who just take the initiative and just get it done, you know? Yeah, but 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 the thing is, they didn't just jump into it. They they knew exactly what they wanted for their products, for their brand. So they knew all of this before they True. got the truck. True. So even though they didn't have a business plan or or anything like that, they knew what they wanted. Right, the business I think she to be. Said, even in the episode, she had a, they had a vision, and they both came. I forgot a, right like, marketing backgrounds or whatever, but they definitely had a vision. So there was a plan. It just wasn't like, oh, let's take eight months to write out our business plan, and let's take another four months to you know do whatever. It's like they knew what they wanted, they executed it, and now they're ready. Absolutely. So, to hear their story, stay tuned. Here we go. Hello, Kelly and Nicole. Thank you for coming on to the Can I Park Here podcast. Hi, thank you for having us. Hi, we're so excited. I can't wait to kind of dig into, like, the design of your mobile boutique because it's really cool. I just love, like, how you guys did everything in it. Before we go there, can you guys just tell the listeners a little bit about your background? Uh, It's Nicole talking. Um, (laughs) Kelly and I started actually an Etsy shop about a year and a half ago, selling our own hand-painted doormats. And we just fell in love with the maker spirit and all the friends that we've made from our Instagram page for the doormats. And... We thought, how cool would it be to like share other people's handmade items and what's the best way to do it? And we were just sitting over dinner one night and we were like, a truck. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of how it became a thing for us. Yeah, oh, it was wow. pretty easy. Wow. I mean, it was a pretty cost effective way for us to be able to showcase other, you know, small companies and, you know, just expand that way. So, so what did you have like a business plan already in place? What steps did you have to take in order to start executing your, your plans? Well, looking back, we should have had a business plan (laughs) (laughs) instead of just being really excited to start. I mean, once we decided that we wanted to do a truck, that's what we lived for. We just had to find the truck and everything else was secondary. We just, that was our main focus was just finding that perfect truck. So looking back on it, we definitely should have been a little bit more organized and should have thought things through before we just jumped headfirst into it. But, I mean, flash forward six or seven months and, you know, it's all working out. So uh, when we found our truck, it was very random and we just, I mean, immediately had to have it. So (laughs) we just went from there. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. So... So many questions. Okay, well, we'll start with, since you already kind of like teased us about it a little bit, um, how did you guys discover your truck? Because usually that's the hardest part. We've been listening to your guys' podcast for a while, like (laughs) since we decided we wanted to do that. So we've we've picked up a ton of tips from your guys' podcast and also the web group or the Facebook group. Um, So that was really helpful. Thank you, first of all. (laughs) (laughs) Um, we started with Craigslist, just like most everyone else does. Um, we looked at, oh, I don't know, probably like 30 or 40 online, went back and Mm. forth that were within our budget and we were being very thrifty, (laughs) if you will. (laughs) And we wanted to start with not spending a ton on the truck itself, um, not going for like a brand new one or one that had been a fashion truck before. So... Mm. We found it on Craigslist. Um, We went and looked at like three that day. Mm -hmm. And this was the last one we looked at. We ended up buying it on the spot (laughs) without getting it checked out, which we do not recommend. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Wow. Did you drive Um, it first? We did drive it first. Yeah. Okay. And it's a 1987 and it had really low miles, like 20,000 miles. Oh, Um, wow. That's yeah. yeah, and we had done a Carfax before, 
Um, and the guy had the title, so it's, you know, there were a few key things that seemed okay, but we would not <laughs> recommend anyone doing that. We got very lucky that it's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we have had a mechanic look at it since, and everything's, you know, fine. Uh, another thing that kind of helped us is, like, what the truck was used for before. It was owned by the U.S. Forestry Service. So we figured if it was owned by a government agency that it had been taken care of regularly. Right. Um, so that was that was kind of a, another little gold star towards this specific truck. Okay. And then I'm just curious too, like just going back kind of to the beginning to like your Etsy shop. Um, how long did you have it before you guys said like, you know what, let's expand and not only like carry our stuff, but stuff from other vendors we started talking about expanding probably six or seven months into doing the etsy store just because Mm -hmm. it kind of blew up overnight once we started it um Uh, and so we got our truck i think eight or nine months uh after we'd started the etsy shop so we hadn't been doing it that long but it was just you know we caught the bug of kind of being our own bosses and you know Etsy is kind of, I mean, while it's huge, it's still kind of a tight-knit group of people. So you work with other people, you, you know, swap and with Instagram and Facebook. You know, we were able to really meet a lot of great people. So by eight or nine months in, we were, we had our truck. So, I mean, we didn't do it for a very long time before we kind of caught that creative spirit bug. Now, the vendors that you carry in the truck, are they just local to California or are they from kind of all over? They're from all over. So we we do have some local, but we didn't want to make it completely local because, I mean, some of these makers are going to be at the same markets and events that we are. So mm-hmm. we wanted to be able to go around the country and pick out great makers and vendors and kind of showcase them in another area of the country that maybe they wouldn't be in. So we've got people from Florida, Ohio. I mean, we've got the Midwest. We've got Northeast. So we've kind of picked and chose from from all over the place. Okay. Now, did you guys decide to do uh, wholesale or consignment? We wholesale. We purchase wholesale about 98% of our inventory. Uh, we have a couple of vendors that are much, much smaller that we've uh, worked out consignment agreements with, but um, wholesale is usually the easiest way. We like it because we know exactly what we're getting into, you know, in the beginning, and it's kind of a little more cut and dry. We buy it, mm-hmm. and then it's ours. So, yeah, right. then you don't have to worry about like keeping track and then figure out, figuring out like, oh, I need to pay this vendor now. It's, exactly. You know, yeah. <laughs> There's yes. so many things to keep track of that anything that we can consolidate or streamline is just what we're looking for right now. Did you guys have to get any type of loans to start the business? No, we're completely self-funded. And actually, that's what where our Etsy stores kind of has really helped us out is that we have taken our profit from making the welcome mats and we've been able to completely fund the truck and the renovation and the inventory just based off of that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah, we're not dipping into our savings. We're not getting loans. It's, I mean, the, the mats have, have fully funded us. So it was, that's also why it was kind of an easy step for us to take is because we, you know, we have this Etsy store, we're doing awesome we want to expand and, you know, we got financially stable before we just jumped headfirst into it. Now, okay. for your Etsy shop to get popular, like what kind of marketing techniques did you use? And then did you use the same one to start promoting like the truck? Sure. Um, for the Etsy shop, we we run promoted listings on Etsy like most people do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think timing was a, a really important factor in ours because when we first launched our welcome mats on Etsy, I think, I mean, there was probably three or four, maybe three or four, that were doing this exact same like type of painted with like funny sayings and things like that. Um, so we got in at a good time. And now if you go and search, there's quite a few. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. We have a standalone website and we, you know, obviously try to do as much, um, 
like optimizing via Google and Bing and stuff like that for our standalone site. And then we use Instagram a lot. We've we've joined um, with other Instagram pages for a few giveaways. We've done some stuff where we uh, work with some bloggers and provide them, you know, a mat uh, for a discounted price or for free, and then they will post about it and share it on their social media. Um, just the kind of normal stuff that you do in today's market. I feel like we we haven't done anything super crazy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done local markets just with the mats too. Um, so that's gotten our name out there too. And so were you able to kind of like implement like pretty much the same techniques with the truck or um, did you go to like maybe news stations like in your area to like let them know that you were here? How did you kind of let like your, I guess, community know that you were up and running? Um, We are using the same social media, you know, I guess processes with the truck. Uh, we've just got the truck completely finished about a week and a half or two weeks ago. So we're brand new. Um, <laughs> right. Brand, brand new. Brand new. <laughs> so no news so, yet. So you guys haven't even gotten, because um, I saw like, uh, you know, I was looking at the website and it said uh, like since tw- or established in 2015, but really that was just the mat. So the truck right. really, you haven't <laughs> tested it out yet. You've been working on right. that for the last several months. Okay. <laughs> We classify it as 2015 because we bought the truck in 2015 yeah. and we were official <laughs> as a company. Right. <laughs> so you have to doormat too. So you are like selling stuff even though you weren't out there yet. Right, right. And yeah. we are selling our mats in the truck. So we kind of, you know, we fudged it a little bit. I mean, 2015. <laughs> It looks so much better than 2016. Yeah. <laughs> we just really need to look official. I was like, wow, that was fast. They were like up and running in 2015. Now we're like, <laughs> like four months in production. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. brand new. I mean, we do have some big markets booked for the summer. Um, and I think that we found one of them uh, we did with our mats last year. And so we they saw that we had the truck too and we're really excited to have our truck there this year. So June, July, August, we've already got some some big like weekend markets booked. So we're getting out there slowly but surely. So how did you come up with the logo and the design of the truck? Did you guys work with a local designer or did you find someone online? Um, How did you go about like picking the design? And I love the geometric shapes that are on the truck too with the different colors like how did you uh or why did you decide to go with that type of look and feel oh thanks um the geometric design we were just actually pinteresting geometric designs (laughs) (laughs) and we came up (laughs) thank you and came up with one that we liked but it was just a single solid color design and so um We actually just took that to the company that did the wrap here locally, and she just created it on her own. And then we knew what colors we wanted to use, the grays, the whites, and the copper accents, because the inside of the truck is copper piping with grays and whites. Um, So that's how we came up with that. The logo, actually, um, one of our girlfriends um, uh, in Washington, D.C., actually, is... um, a, a little bit of a graphic designer. She dabbles in it a bit and has a blog. So um, she worked on the logo for us. We kind of sketched it one night and knew what we wanted it to sort of look like. And mm. she just kind of took it and uh, we picked some fonts and she made it for us. So it's kind of all pieced together. <laughs> yeah, we, we knew we kind of wanted, since we were going to do the, you know, small small business, we knew that we wanted to keep it kind of clean and simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and with our color scheme, I mean, the muted colors of the, the grays and the whites and the copper on the outside, I, the best way to showcase it, I think, was with geometric pattern without it looking too busy and overwhelming. So we just wanted to keep everything kind of clean and, and simple. We love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I mean, we, we love it, too. We're pretty obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> and since it's brand new, I mean, when we went and picked it up from the wrap company, it was... I mean, just the light shined out. We were jumping up and down. We were so excited about it. Because 
and it's not cheap. I mean, um, so the amount of investment and it's all cash, you know, out of our other yeah. hard work. So we were really excited. It turned out so good. Well, I and think it's really impressive. Oh, go ahead. Ashley. Yeah. Do you mind sharing how much the wrap was? Sure. Um, the wrap was about, I think, like 4000 Yeah, around 4000 And wow. that's with the graphic designer, like, going back and forth with, I mean, I think we had half a dozen proofs back and forth. Um, so, I mean, they were great with the graphic design included. Mm-hmm. And our truck was, they did a lot of the prep work for us for the truck. Because it was a little... Yeah, there were some bumpy places, there was some rust, there was, you know, yeah. some old paint that had to be had to be peeled off. So, um, all in, I think, was around 4000 So, we were, I mean, we were pretty happy with that, but it was a pretty big investment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody else that we've asked, like, that is like the magic number, you know? Oh, really? It's 4000 Yeah. Um, even one of uh, our recent podcasts, I think that was like the number two, 4,000. So I, it seems like that's kind of on average, if you're getting like a full wrap, that's about how much it's going to cost, give or take like the size of the truck. Right. Oh, that yeah. makes us feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I feel better about I it. Mean, we got a lot of quotes and a lot, a lot of quotes came out much higher. So this was the company that they're local. So, you know, we've, we had to. We were able to look at their other work, um, but we were a little worried because we went with the cheapest number, which isn't always best, but but it works out fine. for sure. Yeah. And I love the, the the copper pipes for the shelves mm-hmm. inside the truck. Now, whose design was that? That was Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, obsessed with copper everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> And I mean, and it was so amazing that the that the wrap company was able to incorporate those shots of really shiny copper in the outside too. But I mean, I've been obsessed with copper for quite some time, so I kind of forced it down Nicole's throat. And it, I mean, it's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it, it does take a little bit of maintenance because it gets tarnished. But uh, we're, I'm like a pro copper polisher now <laughs> <laughs> because it was her idea. She's the one that has to polish it. Oh, I have yeah. to polish it all the time. <laughs> but it turned Commitment. out amazing. Yeah. yeah. We did learn how to solder the copper together. So, you oh. know, a blowtorch was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, in Nicole's front yard. So everybody thought we were crazy. Oh, so you and actually put it together yourself. Yes. You know? We yes. did. We did. Okay. The ent- the we did the entire inside of the truck. Um, my yes. husband helped remove some of the stuff that was in there all wet- already because it was riveted with um, these huge things, metal rivets. But uh, we did the build out all ourselves inside, so it was nice. a learning experience. Definitely a learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> and your flooring is that uh, vinyl? Yeah, it's a vinyl plank flooring. Um, it kind of has these tabs underneath and. It's- sticks together so it's like a floating floor which we were told that would be best because of the movement of the truck not Mm. to have something glued down uh, or you know um, so and it was very inexpensive we just bought it from Home Depot and put some baseboards around the bottom and it looks great wow so did you guys um, have to pay for anything like lighting or putting a generator in or anything like that or did you all do everything yourselves with the help of friends and family? Lots of friends. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, we'll feed you if you'll come over and... <laughs> yeah, and take a look at the electrical. Yeah. Or if you can cut some floor for us, then, yeah. you know, we'll give you dinner. So we did everything. Yeah, we don't have a generator. I know a lot of the other trucks do, but we went back and forth with that. Um, being in Southern California, the weather here is usually pretty consistent. About 75 or 80 degrees. Um, Lucky. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's always a nice coastal breeze. So um, working in the truck, we got to know, like, what the airflow was. And if we have both the front doors open, it's very flowy in there. And it doesn't mm-hmm. ever get really that hot. So we chose not to do a generator because we didn't need to get an air conditioner or a heater. Um, and we have a we're not too technical, but we have a, some sort of electrical inverter thing that will power lights and stuff. So now are you guys doing this or will you do this like full time or are you going to have still like a 
you know, full time, like regular nine to five job and only work this nights and weekends? We actually just at the end of May, both quit our for our full time jobs. Wow. So, yeah, I'm about we're, to start we're crying in right now. It. We I are swear, all, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> all in all the time. <laughs> yeah, both quit corporate America and it has been we had no idea if we could fill our time with this, but I mean so far we are putting in so many hours because we've been doing everything up to this point just on nights and weekends. So Mm. we were working basically two and a half full-time jobs each up to this point. So no more corporate America. We are all in. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, because you guys were doing full-time jobs, you had a successful Etsy shop and then working on a truck. That's exactly. a lot. That's no sleep. That's like four hours sleep. It was night. no sleep. No <laughs> sleep ever. We're like, and remember the last time that you just sat down and watched TV like on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon? No. <laughs> no, <there's laughs> no. no TV. <laughs> no. It's like when you, you know, and I always tell people this, like if you are like hustling for something, like TV is the first thing that has to go because oh, it's yeah. the biggest time suck that doesn't give you anything. There's no rewards, exactly. you know? Exactly. And there's, I mean, we haven't had any, I mean, there's just no spare time. And we realized that if we wanted to grow both of our businesses, then we had to make time. And so we had to cut out the nine to five. (laughs) (laughs) Our our main jobs had to go. So because we had hit kind of a plateau of like, okay, we're already devoting every night and every weekend to this. And we can't, like, for example, we couldn't offer our mats wholesale because we just didn't have the bandwidth to do it. So mm. we just had to uh, call it in and uh, <laughs> make that choice. And we're really excited that we did. A little nervous, but excited. <laughs> Still a little nervous, but it's been amazing. Yeah. So when will you guys, like, when will be your first, I guess, event? Um, the first big event is a two-day market um, right on the coast near San Diego, which is about 60 miles south of us. And mm. it's a... Uh, just a two-day maker market at the end of June, June 25th and 26th. That's our first official big event. Mm. Um, And we are right now this week just signing up with some local farmers markets that allow craft vendors and like handmade goods. So we'll be regulars there, hopefully, um, a few days a week. And then we have other big events. There's like a, a music festival in Newport Beach that we're booked in July. And then some like... Uh, monthly markets and street fairs. So we're just getting signed up for everything right now uh, as quickly as we can. <laughs> yeah. But our, our, our big launch is in two weeks. So yeah. we're pretty excited about it. That is exciting. I'm excited yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I think it'll be really, really good. And uh, we've been advertising um, with the markets that we already have booked. So, I mean, they they were excited to hear from us and excited to have us there. So I think we'll, we'll do really well. Now, do you guys ever plan on um, collaborating with any other local trucks? Yeah, we've actually been thinking about that. Um, we were just kind of waiting until the truck was done, done, and we kind of had our feet back under us um, to make the introductions. Um, mm-hmm. There are several trucks in Orange County. Of course, there's a lot in L.A., but um, we'll stay a little more local to our area for a while, I think. Um, so that would be really cool. I think that would be neat. I know the food trucks kind of collaborate sometimes and there's some places that they meet up weekly. Um, so that would be really neat if we could even start something like that here locally. And then, um, I know you guys, uh, you know, sell items online primarily, um, right now, like the mats, but uh, what do you have you all decided, like what point of sale system you're going to use and will it connect to your website? Yes. So we have gone with Shopify. Mm-hmm. And so we are getting I think we've got most of the mats on the site and we are starting this week to put our inventory up as well. So we will be all connected all the time. Yeah, so Shopify It's so simple. <laughs> it really seemed like the the most user friendly um, mm-hmm. and cost effective. Some of I I feel like and we had a little spreadsheet going like comparing all the additional things you have to buy with some of the other ones and it seemed like Shopify was the best bet. 
Yeah, I've been experimenting with that for my business. And when I go out to like the farmer's market, I mean, everything is so easy. And I like that, you know, it's, you know, if I sell something like at the market, it takes it off the website. So there's no accidentally selling, you know, the same thing in two different places and maybe not having enough of it. Um, and then it's like, once you get used to kind of like the interface, it seemed pretty easy and they're always like, can I help you? You know, I feel like they have <laughs> yes, like the best <laughs> customer service ever. <laughs> they really do. And the, uh, inventory management was one of our biggest things because being mobile, um, we didn't want to have to keep a spreadsheet and like track it in four different places. So like you said, being out at markets, it was just, it was kind of a no-brainer with Shopify. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see, like, how much you guys end up, you know, selling online versus, like, you know, what you make just out at these various events. Yeah, it will be. I think that the, <laughs> I think that in person is going to be our, our biggest seller. Um, I think we're pretty confident with that, but we're excited to get it all up online and see what, see what happens. Yeah. Well, it seems, and you know, some other people that we've interviewed in the past, like they said, like, it's great for like, if a customer, um, sees you and meets you and then just wants like, Oh, doesn't know if they want to buy something. Like, it's just a great option. Like they could always go online or if they tell somebody about you, but they happen not to live in the area. It's just like, I guess another way to like make some money, but it seems like for most fashion trucks, the bulk of the money is made like at these different events. So yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think we, well, we hope that it is because we like to, I mean, we, part of the reason that we wanted to do the mobile truck is because we wanted to be able to actually like meet our customers in person and explain, mm -hmm. you know, what each maker does and who they are and where it came from. So we're kind of hoping with that, you know, not handmade, but well, I guess handmade feel <laughs> yeah. that will kind of have an, advan an advantage. We wanted to get away from like the fast fashion and all of that stuff. So I think the the personal experience is where we want to excel and the part that we really like. Now for your, um, the rugs, are you going to still keep the Etsy shop open in addition to the website and selling in person? Definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they are our consistent bread and butter, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's pretty, you know, the shop, we've got it set up. We, we feel like our um, ads and analytics on via Etsy are pretty good. Um, so we've got a pretty consistent order base with that. So we wouldn't want it. We don't want to give that up. No, and we've started having quite a few repeat customers, too. So we want to keep it kind of in that same area so they know exactly where to find us. Okay. Plus, we really like it. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. We love we love do, being able to paint and work. I mean, especially custom orders with with people. I mean, because we can literally do just about everything. So we definitely want to keep that that Etsy format. Um, and I mean, maybe our website will start getting more traffic as like the truck gets up and going, and people can see it in person. So, you know, to us, it kind of doesn't matter if they buy it directly from our site. Or if they go through Etsy yeah. with the with the, the doormats. Okay. Yeah. And I like, I mean, and the thing about, I kept my Etsy site too because there's like a community there. And so there's people who probably wouldn't buy it on your main website because they're just Etsy people, right? Their exactly. credit cards and everything is already saved in Etsy. You know, that's <laughs> like their easy. jam, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. It's really they trust easy to the platform. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So one will probably help the other. Uh, so that's pretty cool, especially since the other one is already so popular. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, people can see our reviews and see how many sales we've got. So they know that we're not, you know, that aspect of it isn't just brand new and they don't know what they're getting. So, right, kind right. Of like the, you know, having that, that visibility through Etsy. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of listeners out there that are like really green with envy right now because they're just like, man, I just can't wait to start my fashion truck. They're just kind of waiting for the right time or just to have like the, the funds to do it. So do you have any advice for like the people out there that are thinking about doing it, like some things that they should keep in mind, you know, uh, you know, maybe some tips you learned when you first started? I think that, you know, while we kind of jumped in head first, uh, <laughs> 
without planning everything through, we definitely had a clear vision going into it of what we wanted. Um, so I think that was that's the most important part because I mean you know buying the inventory and finishing out the truck if you've got that clear vision of what you want your customers to see and what's important to you then I mean everything else just falls into place. So I mean we did a lot there was a lot of trial and error involved but I think having that clear vision of who you are and what you want to portray was definitely the most important part and I think that's also maybe why it was. I mean, painful at times, but it was kind of easy for Nicole and I to just kind of slide right into this. And we, you know, we knew what the other person was envisioning because we had it all written out. We know each other. So it was easy for us to just collaborate and just go for it. So, I mean, kind of ripping the Band-Aid and just going for it was, I mean, I think that's the most important part. But having that vision of what you want people to know about you just by looking at your truck was, was definitely the biggest part. And then, you know, I find too, like, um, it seems like, uh, not to say people who do it alone aren't successful, but we've interviewed a lot of success, successful fashion truck owners that have a partner. Um, so I think it's cool that you guys have each other. So it's not just one person doing it. Um, how did, how have you guys like decided to like split the duties as far as like, is one person going to be, for example, on inventory inventory where the other person is responsible for social media or are you still trying to figure that out Nicole <laughs> Nicole is a social media person I am not <laughs> I'm it. and now now that we have you know more time since we're not working full-time I'm like oh why don't you show me this and she on, <laughs> no on Instagram she's like no it's mine I do it <laughs> so Social media is all Nicole all the time. She like lives, breathes, and eats it, and she is amazing at it. Um, everything else is just kind of, you know, but yeah, we split everything. We have our crazy to do list every single day that we do at the very beginning of the day. Yeah. And it's just whoever has five seconds, that's the person that picks it up and does it. So it's just kind of flows pretty easily. But social media, that is all Nicole. But we, <laughs> we definitely discuss, especially buying inventory and stuff like that. Um, Because we both, even though we're such close friends, we have really different um, tastes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So um, a lot of the things we like, a lot of things are very similar. But clothing and some jewelry and things like that, um, we have different tastes. And we, you know, it's really good to remember that you're not buying inventory for yourself. You're buying it for your shoppers. So we try to really have a good variety of stuff, and that's where it's really good for both of us to look at things. Um, especially even just from one vendor or maker, they, they'll have earrings that I will just scroll past and Kelly will be like, those are the cutest things I've ever seen. So, um, (laughs) that's where having two really kind of is a bonus for us. Definitely. And we, we both also have, you know, kind of financial business backgrounds. So Mm -hmm. we've been pretty, you know, pretty consistently on the same page budget wise throughout the entire process. So, I mean, there's definitely been some give and take, but since we, you know, we're relatively responsible human (laughs) beings um, and we do have, you know, a business sense. So I think that that has helped us a lot throughout this whole process, too, is keeping track of everything and budgeting and staying on that budget. Um, We hold each other accountable for it. So that's definitely a a plus with having a partner. Yeah, and, I, you know, I don't think we've ever really kind of gone into this a little bit, but I guess um, that's something else people need to think about. And I don't know if you guys have started already, but, like, you know, creating a business ca- account that, you know, all your expenses are going to go into and just really making sure you're kind of keeping track of, like, um, what's going in and what's going out of your business. Because sometimes, especially for people who start out that are creatives, like, you forget that business side of things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's very really easy important. to get caught up. <laughs> it right. is. We were, we were actually kind of planning ahead. When we started the Etsy shop over a year ago um, and it started getting busy, we thought, okay, the first thing we need to do is set up accounting and set up a bank account that's separate that we are using just for the Etsy funds coming in and going out and shipping charges, all that stuff. So we did that right away, um, Mm. and that was good. So we had separate cards that we were using just for that stuff. Uh, That really helped. Um, Our accountant thanked us. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
So um, it made it a lot easier uh, from the beginning. And that is a really important thing, I think. Definitely. To start. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, we there were a few times, especially buying inventory, uh, that we were just so excited about everything that we were seeing. And, oh, let's get this and let's get this and let's get this. And then you take a look at your books, and you're like, oh, wait, <laughs> nope, we can't do that right now. Let's half that order and ease into it instead of just blowing everything, you know, on the first great necklace we see. So that, I mean, I think having that in place was really important. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also wanted to ask, in regards to the business itself, how did you structure that? Like legally, are you guys uh, like set up as a general partnership, a LLC? How did that get set up for you guys? Um, we're set up as an LLC, and we actually have a friend who is a, a business attorney. He didn't process the LLC for us because we were doing such a simple format that we just used Legal Zoom. Um, and just did the basic LLC and then with a little advice from him, uh, decided on some other things to incorporate, but, um, it's just a basic LLC and, uh, I think that's good for us. Yeah, we, right we now. did an LLC and then we have a DBA for the but, welcome mats as well. So we're keeping it together yet separate under that same LLC. Gotcha. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, and and it was fairly I, easy for you to do, right? So you could recommend yeah. it to other people if they didn't Absolutely. want to pay anybody else to do it for them. Absolutely. I mean, the, the forms were, e- were very simple. I mean, we're no legal experts at all. So <laughs> it, was easy for, it was easy for us to do, and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, and then, I mean, if, you, if it gets bigger, if it changes, then you can do it all on LegalZoom. Mm-hmm. So for us so far, it's been great. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, you mentioned two important things, and it was uh, I was just listening to one of the episodes of the Being Boss podcast, which is a great podcast for women entrepreneurs. But they were like, um, two things you need is like a CPA and access to an attorney. CPA yeah. first, just to make sure your money is good, and attorney just in case, you know? <laughs> and it sounds exactly. like you do <laughs> have like at least someone, yeah, that you can contact for either or. So that's great. So all the listeners out there definitely consider that um, because it might just make your life a little bit easier. And you know, it's funny, you guys kind of remind me for some reason of like, so about a year ago, we interviewed Patterns and Pops. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're in Denver, Colorado. We have. Yes. yeah, Yeah. I mean, but it was, it was funny because a year, about a year ago today, we were talking to them and they just like, just like you guys was like, we're going to do it. <laughs> and they just, oh. like, plunged into it. I remember that, Astro? Yeah. They were like, yeah, we just decided, yeah, we're going to do a truck. And I think they did it in, like, maybe even, like, three, four months. And oh now God, they're still, like, crazy popular. They've got, like, 14,000, like, Instagram followers. So, like, even within that year, they just, like, knew what they wanted to do. They loved it, and they just, like, blew up. So just the energy you guys have. And I can just tell, like, you guys, like, believe in this. And so when people can tell that, like, usually they believe in you, too. You know? And <laughs> like, force people to believe in you. Exactly. With a little bit of excitement, you will believe. Exactly. So it'll be cool just to watch you guys kind of, like, grow over this next year, you know? Um, which is pretty amazing. No know. pressure. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no pressure. 20,000 Instagram followers. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah, we're really, really, really excited. And I mean, prob- probably obnoxiously excited to everyone we come in contact with, especially now that we've quit corporate America. It's this all the time, 24 <laughs> 7. Everybody that we talk to, this is what we talk to them about. So, I mean, the excitement is definitely there. And we hope, you know, looking back a year from now, that we will be in that position of blowing up. I mean, we had no idea that painting high on a welcome mat would be, you know, a <laughs> right. good business, you know? So I, we're hoping that the truck does the same thing where it just shocks us even. I mean, we sit back now and just have no idea how we got here. Yeah. <laughs> and we're yeah. so excited about it. So hopefully yeah. this truck is going to go this same way that the mats did and even bigger. <laughs> right. It will. It will. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. I just have like a couple of um, wrap up questions to help the audience get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, do you have a favorite podcast, blog, book, or TV show? And if so, what is it? Well, my favorite right now is your podcast, of course. <laughs> Woo-hoo! No, really, it has been such a help. And Absolutely. I'll I'll message episodes to her when we were working full time, and she's like, "You have to stop sending me stuff. I have to do work." I'm like, <laughs> no, but it's so good. <laughs> Like, okay, on my lunch break, I will yeah. listen to it, I swear. <laughs> uh, and TV, well, our, my DVR is really full right now, but I'm a sucker for any kind of reality TV, so. I mean, trashy reality TV, yeah. is like, sign us up, for sure. Any cool. and everything. <laughs> well, you know, I would say for the podcast, like, that's, you know, the huge thanks goes to like all the guests. Cause it's like just being willing, like you guys kind of to open up and share tips and tricks so other people can learn from it. And then, you know, uh, open businesses and kind of live their dreams. So, um, it's pretty cool. So, you know, in essence, like somebody is going to hear you guys and then they're going to start a truck because of it. So I, you know, it's like, you guys are giving back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe they'll learn. I mean, at least they'll learn what not to do. <laughs> Don't just go and buy a forestry truck randomly. To go <laughs> I mean, or do, or just do it, <laughs> or do right. Just go with it. Um, if you could have any celebrity, entertainer, model, athlete, whoever visit your mobile boutique, who would it be? Oh my gosh, I can't. Think, I can't think of a single name but of anyone. Um, <laughs> Uh, no reality what's, TV stars. What's the um, Design Love Fest? The blog. What's her Marie? name? Marie? Oh yeah, it's um, yeah. Obsessed with her. her. Yeah. God, obsessed. I can't think of her name, but yes, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah her, be her. Everything she does is pretty beautiful. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're completely obsessed. So that would yeah. be like our, you know, I mean, we can call her. Yeah, we can call her a celebrity for sure. Yeah, 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 I would definitely, is. yeah, Brie Emery, yes. Brie yes. Emery, yes, obsessed with everything she does. And Brie, if you're listening, that's an open invitation. <laughs> open invitation. <laughs> know, exactly. I mean, we'll give you everything for free if you want it, it doesn't even matter, <laughs> right, just come right. and hang out. <laughs> when we tweet out, like, this episode, we'll, like, tag her and be like, and they'd love to have Design Love Fest visit. <laughs> you never know. And she'll stay far away, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, she'll be like, like who okay, are these random time. people? <laughs> Not going near those crazy pants chicks. <laughs> right. Um, and then, so you guys already talked about getting very little sleep, but when you do have a little bit of free time, what do you guys like to do just to wind down and de-stress? Um, well, we both have dogs. I have three dogs and Kelly has one dog. And so taking them to the dog beach is always a good, good time. Um, we like to watch sports actually right now. Basketball's on and we love watching football. So like having a beer, hanging out. Yeah. That's usually what we do. Yeah. Yeah, But long, long periods of time of, of free time just, it doesn't happen. (laughs) So when it comes back. When it comes back, we will watch sports. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so, because if you guys I mean, get popular, bikes, you're popular. never going to have free time. Yeah. I know. I know. No, I'd be okay with that, though. Yeah. That's right. Definitely okay with that. <laughs> and then, are you guys Android or iPhone, and what's your favorite app? We're both iPhone. Both iPhone. Uh, all iPhone all the time. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go with you. Instagram. mm because I'm obsessed. I love it. I think it's great. Um, what's yours, Kelly? Amazon. <laughs> oh, Amazon, Amazon is dangerous, though, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and I also like, why is yeah. there a package coming in every night? I mean, every, every day. Every single day. <laughs> yeah. Everything. is a- My Amazon app is my lifesaver. I okay. can't make fun of her too much because I do Amazon Fresh for my groceries even. So. Oh. <laughs> okay. oh I've never heard hardcore. of that. <laughs> yes, it's great. And it's actually less expensive than the grocery store pricing. So check into it. Wow. They might have it in your area. <laughs> now we're advertising for Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, what's so crazy is, I don't know, most people don't remember, like Amazon started off as a bookstore, 
right? Yeah. Like years ago, that's all they sold was books. They were like this simple book online bookstore. And now you could buy anything and everything. They've got groceries. Oh, yeah. You can do the videos. Like there's all the, I mean, they're like everything. this monster. Yes. It's kind of It's crazy. amazing. Yeah. Well, and especially if you don't have any free time, I mean, I don't have time to run to the store and get anything. So, I mean, Amazon that and it'll be here tomorrow. Sign me up. <laughs> I know it, it forces. I mean, I'm like, man, am I lazy? Because I'll like drive past a Target, but I'm like, why stop? I could just order it on Amazon. Oh, yeah, I remember it'll come. For, it'll come for free. Like, why am I going to get out of my car and wait in line? You know, yeah, <laughs> that's like a waste yeah. of time. <laughs> Don't have time for that. I'll just have it yeah. sent to me. <laughs> what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Oh, I would be a singer because I'm a terrible singer, but I like to sing. <laughs> I would be a singer. <laughs> that, that was is, quick. That is so random. Yeah. Uh, like a performer, like a pop artist, if you will. I mean, I guess that would be fun. Uh, if I could not, if I could not fail, I would be just a professional travel blogger. I think. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do. That would be nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just take my dog with me everywhere and then write about it. That is what and I And get paid for it. I mean. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. The best part. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's the key. <laughs> well, for cool. Sure. Well, um, where can, like, uh, the audience find you? Please let them know. Your website and your social media handles will also have it on the show notes, but people might be really eager and want to type it in now. <laughs> Sure. Um, the website is pretty simple, um, nickelandbirch.com, so it's all spelled out. And then our Instagram and Twitter are the same, at nickelandbirch, all spelled out the same. Cool. And then uh, did you want to give your Etsy site, too, Because for the Etsy fans out there? Sure. Um, the Etsy site for the Welcome Mats is Nickel Designs Shop. So it's nickel like the same with the nickel and birch, but nickel designs shop. Come find us. We love you. Right. <laughs> Buy, Buy <all> something. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you guys for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you for having us. It's it's super flattering. And again, I know I've said it a couple of times, but it, this podcast and the Facebook information group has been amazing, more than helpful. And it's really, really been, yeah. And we're, we're super like fan nerds of you guys. So <laughs> thank you for having us on. Yeah, thank you. Another great episode. I, I like the conversation that we end up having about like the business side of things, like accounting, because that's not really the sexy part of the business, but it's important. And uh, it's good that you have your stuff together when it comes to that. And I just love the fact that their Etsy shop funded their entire renovation and truck. It's just awesome. Mm. Like they didn't have to get a loan or anything. They didn't have Amazing. to use their personal funds. Like, can this happen for everybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. It's really cool. Very inspirational story. For those of you out there on the fence, I hope maybe this uh, helps you off of it. And if you do have kind of like your vision in mind and you know what you want to do, do it. Execute Absolutely. it. Doesn't mean that you have to quit your job today or tomorrow. It just means get started in whatever way that makes sense for you and your life. So we know that we took like a billion minutes in the intro. So we're not <laughs> going to do it in the outro today. So we're going to we're going to relieve you. <laughs> we're we're going to go ahead and end this. Um, but of course, I have to, you know, mention my my GoFundMe again to open up my home decor retail store in Chicago. Please go to GoFundMe.com backslash Astral Riles. That's A-S-T-R-A-L-R-I-L-E-S. -E or you can just type Astral Riles into the search box in the GoFundMe website. But please help your girl. Any amount is appreciated. 
I love you for it. And I send you virtual hugs and kisses. Mwah, mwah, mwah. That was gross. People just I know. like hey. backed up from like <laughs> wherever my, they are. <laughs> my puppy loves it. So. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to check out our episode on Spirit of 608. And don't forget to please share our podcast with other people. We're going to try to get our um, listenership. Is that the word? <laughs> We're going to try to get our the number of listeners up, you know, since we've been on a hiatus. So we got to get back on it and try to, like, get popular in iTunes again. So please uh, share us and follow us at FFT underscore official underscore on Twitter and Instagram. Every place else, if you just look up Find a Fashion Truck, we'll come right up. If you want to uh, go to our, um, or join our private Facebook group, it's called Let's Talk About Fashion Trucks, um, and send a request, and we'll get right to it and try to approve you in a timely manner. All right. So um, if you haven't already, go to iTunes, give us a great review. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, you guys have an excellent day. Yeah. Thanks for parking here. Bye.